Hello everybody, it's Detective Stu here again and today we're going to look at turning this little $35 machine into a Sony PlayStation 1. Now to do that I'm going to walk you through step by step all the settings I use to get the emulation shown in my videos. Now those steps are shown on screen right now so feel free to click to the section that you're interested in. Otherwise let's start from the beginning at the BIOS. Now unfortunately I can't tell you or link to a BIOS file for the PlayStation 1 but if you do look carefully on the screen you may get a few hints on where you can find one. Now with some good detective work you should be able to find scph1001.bin. Download this file to your computer and extract it. Now we're going to need our USB stick connected to the PC and this should be the same stick that you used to copy your ROMs to the Raspberry Pi. Now once extracted we're going to take this scph bin file and we're going to put it in our ROM folder into the PSX folder. You can see me doing that on screen. You shouldn't have any trouble with this if you followed my last video and if you do have some trouble make sure you refer back to that. If all goes well we're going to safely remove that USB stick, disconnect it from our PC and connect it to our Raspberry Pi. Now jumping across to our Raspberry Pi we want to double check that our USB is connected and we'll also connect our USB keyboard. We're going to push F4 to get to the command prompt now you want to type the command you see on screen to navigate to the RetroPie ROMs PSX folder. Alternatively, you can follow the steps I am doing on my RetroPie. It will take a little bit longer, but whichever you feel most comfortable with is the correct way. Once I reached that folder, I ran an ls command to see the contents, and in that folder we can see our scph1001.bin, which has been copied from our USB stick to this folder. Now what we want to do is move this from the ROMs folder to the BIOS folder. We're going to do that with the MV command which you can see on screen now and then we're going to copy it to home slash pi slash retro pi slash BIOS. Now make sure you press tab as you're typing this to auto fill the folder name. That will really help out with your navigation. Now we're going to quickly navigate to the BIOS folder to double check that our BIOS file has been copied across. I use a cd space dot dot command to move up the directory tree. And once we're in the BIOS folder, we can see that our SCPH file is there. Now that is the BIOS file done. Give yourselves a pat on the back and let's look at some advanced settings in the retroarch.config file. Now the command for that is on screen, so type that in exactly as you see it, no capitals, and hit enter to open that file. Once we're in the file, we're going to hit Control plus W to search for some terms. The first one is going to be input underscore menu underscore toggle. So type that in, hit enter. Now once we get there, what we want to do is delete the hashtag preceding this line. Mine is already deleted, so make sure yours looks the same as mine right now. And this will give us access to our emulator setup menu inside the PSX emulator. Hit Control W again and our next search term is video underscore smooth. Once we navigate to that part of the file, what we want to do is change that to equals true. It's going to be false by default, so delete the false and type true. Now we are done for this file, so you want to hit Control X and push Y to save. It's going to ask you to type a file name. You don't need to type anything, just push enter and it will override our default file. Next up, I want to change my video from the stretched widescreen format to the original PSX 4x3 format. We do this in the ES underscore systems configuration file and the command to get to that file is shown on screen. So type that in exactly as you see it and push enter. Once in hit Control W again and this time search for Sony PlayStation 1. It's going to take us right to the end of the file. And what we want to do here is go to our run command.sh1 and we want to change that 1 to a 2. So follow exactly what I'm doing on screen. Hit Control X, make sure you push Y to save and enter to overwrite our original file. Next up we're going to change our GPU memory to 128 meg. Now this is the value I use but feel free to experiment with that. So we're going to type sudo space raspi dash config. We're going to go down to number 8 which is advanced options and go to A3 which is memory split. Push enter here, type in 128, go down to OK, push enter and then push right and select finish and push enter again. The Raspberry Pi will reboot and then we're ready to go into the emulator. Okay guys, we are back in Emulation Station and what we want to do is go into our PlayStation menu, select any game and load up the emulator. 
We can see that it looks a little different now compared to what it would have looked like previously. Our screen is 4x3. We should have a video smoothing filter which should make it look a little bit nicer. And the BIOS file will help with compatibility for sure. Now I'm just going to get into a gameplay section so I can test all my control settings that I alter in this next section. So just let me load this up. And what you're seeing now is me holding down my toggle key on my Xbox remote. We set this up in our last video and then I push F1 on my keyboard while this is held. Now guys, just have a look at what I do here on screen. If we go down to options and then core options, we get the option to set our pad as an analog pad or a standard pad. Now this will let us use our joysticks on the Xbox 360 controller. We can also set up the player 2 pad type. We have some options to increase the resolution. Now this will slow down our gameplay, but it will look a lot better. So you can play around with that and see how it goes. And the great thing about this is if you do stuff anything up, you can just reset your Raspberry Pi and they will not save. Now, do not worry, I'm going to show you how to save all these options. So have a play around, find out what you like, and then we'll look at how to save these. Now, if you are having any control issues or want to set up a second joypad for your second player control, go down to settings. And then we're going to scroll down and we're going to look for input settings dash joypad. Now in this menu we're going to have a user 1 or user 2 bind all option. If you select this it will allow you to set up all your keys to corresponding PlayStation keys. You can also select your device type and I recommend selecting RetroPad or RetroPad with analog if you're having trouble with your joystick. You can also force your D-pad to your left analog stick if you want, which is what I've done there. If you're not having any issues, I recommend you leave these as the defaults, but the options are there if you need to play with them. So see what works for you. And then we're going to jump forward to saving all these files after a power off. Now this step is very important guys, you want to go back to the main configuration menu and click save new config. Now you can see on screen it's saved it to libretro-1.cfg. Now this is important because we're going to copy these settings which we've written into our permanent configuration file. So exit your emulator guys, we're going to hit F4 again on our keyboard and go back to the command prompt. Here we're going to type the command on screen to navigate to cd space slash opt slash retropie slash configs slash all and this is where our libretro file was just saved. Once we get there type analysis command and just confirm you can see libretro.cfg and I can see that right there and now what we want to do is append that file to our configuration file for the PSX emulator. To do that we're going to use the cat command so we're going to type cat space then we're going to type libretro.cfg, which is the configuration file which we just wrote. We're going to use two greater than arrows, and then we're going to type the directory of our PlayStation configuration file, which is forward slash opt, forward slash retropie, forward slash configs, forward slash psx, forward slash retroarc.cfg. Hit enter on that, and that's going to combine those two files together. And what that means is every time we restart the system, we're going to have the settings that we want to use ready and available every time without having to go into that menu. So that's it guys, our PSX emulation setup is complete. This is how I run my games and I think it works very well. If you want to know anything more, please leave me a comment. Also, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up on this video. Thanks very much guys, good luck with your Raspberry Pi. Let me know if there's any issues and I'll see you guys soon.